Hmm. Well, I'm answering a request that somebody wanted me to do this. Somebody wanted to see me in the old gimmick here. So here it is, the original leather coat. Unfortunately, the original hat rotted away, so I had a secondary hat to use, but this is the outfit I wore when I debuted 42nd Street Pete at Schiller Theater, I don't know how many fucking wonderful years ago, but this is how it was, and it still is, because this coat is part of me, and so is the hat and the shades and everything that goes with it, and the nasty little button, and the dog, too. So, unfortunately, we got another passing to note. Uh, the great Burt Young passed away last week. Um, Burt, of course, everybody knows him from the Rocky films. But Burt did a lot of other work, including a couple Grindhouse-type films, including Blood Beach, where he co-starred with John Saxon as a detective, and Sam Peckinpah's Convoy, where he was a crazy truck driver. So, unfortunately, another legend leaves us uh, this Halloween season, and all we can say is thank you, Burt. May you rest in peace, and, you know, you were a great character actor in almost anything you did. I think he was also in another real low-budget stinker... Um, God, Carnival of Blood or something like that, going back years ago? I could be wrong, but anyway. Well, it's time for me to drop a turd into the Halloween punch bowl. And everybody has their own idea of the shittiest fucking horror movie ever made. <laughs> well, let me tell you. I just found something that basically, it can't be fucking topped. 1966 is The Vulture which I saw on a double bill with the Deadly Bees, which, to me, bees aren't fucking scary at all. But we thought the vulture had potential. And I'm on, on the black and white motif still, but the weird thing is, this thing was shot in color and released theatrically in black and white. And if you really want to kill your brain cells, you can find the uncut color 91-minute version on YouTube, and pretty much I revisited this thing, and I'm like, holy shit. All right, uh, the prem it starts off good in, in a graveyard. You hear this, you see this like gravestone scraping against something as this woman makes a, an exit through the graveyard. She's cutting through, and all of a sudden the grave erupts, and you hear these wings flapping, and this woman goes into terror. And then you see her in a hospital where her hair is complete, turned completely white. And they ask her what she saw, and she says she saw a big bird with a human head. So, there you have the whole fucking movie, a big bird with a human head, that you don't see until the last thing. What happens is that a mad scientist was doing some experiments and somehow had a, is related to the guy in the coffin and decided to switch bodies for some strange-ass fucking reason, but didn't realize that the guy had his pet vulture buried in the coffin. So, this scientist has now become half man, half vulture, and is trying to wipe out a certain family. And Broderick Crawford is the only member of this family, and he's a British squire. Go figure. Uh, Brod, I think, was having trouble finding work at this point because of his alcoholism, so he winds up in this thing, as does another Academy Award-winning actor, Akim Tarimov, who is the mad scientist who walks around with a pair of canes because he's got the vulture body underneath his whatever the fuck he's wearing. Uh, anyway, scientist Robert Hutton comes over after being embarrassed by appearing and directing in the slime people in the States, and is experimenting with this thing called a nuclear transmutation or some fucking horseshit like that, which basically enabled this to happen. So, Broderick Crawford, of course, his character, the Squire, refuses to keep his window closed at night, and something taps on the window, and he goes out, and he's whisked away by these two huge pair of vulture feet. Uh, his middle brother suffers the same fate, only off-camera, and then his niece is plucked away at a bus stop and is saved when Robert Hutton finds her up on a cliff with poor Akeem in a fucking vulture suit. He gets shot twice, end of the fucking movie. Um, like I said, this thing is terrible, completely terrible and uh, in every way, shape, or form. This weird albino-looking guy pops up here and there, which basically does nothing. But it's strange that this isn't the only film that was shot in color and released theatrically in black and white. Another film that I saw the premiere for, The Frozen Dead, and these are all Paramount releases too, was released in black and white and is on TV in color. Okay, so 
The Vulture is a shitty movie, so let's move on to a movie that isn't shitty, 1957's The Monster That Challenged the World. And this is another one that appeared on one of the, you know, chiller showcases or horror showcases or whatever. I think it was WOR. Um, there's something, an earthquake unleashes prehistoric snails that are pretty gnarly because this one, uh, I don't know, he, a guy para, you know, parachutes into uh, the Salton Sea, that's where they're doing this. And they go to find him, and they find his horribly bloated body, which we really didn't need to see as little kids, but hey, fuck it, you know, we're being exposed to everything. And then the divers are going down looking for somebody else who disappeared, when one of these uh, snail things grabs, him, grabs his head between his pinchers and crushes it on fucking camera. And then it comes up and is attacking the boat, and all this fucking jizz is dripping out of its mouth, more jizz than Tracy Lord ever ingested, but I digress. And they kill this one by poking its eye out with a fucking pole. And of course they have to find the nest of these things and take one of the eggs back to put in a laboratory by, uh, actually the, the cast is Tim Holt who used to do cowboy stuff, he's a naval commander, and Hans Conried from Fractured Flickers and 500 Fingers of Dr. T is a scientist. So, of course, they find these creatures, they blow them up and take an egg and put the egg in the scientist's lab. Well, of course, Hans Conrad has to have a female assistant and she has to have an annoying little kid who likes the bunnies in there. So she goes in and turns up the heat because the bunnies might be cold, hatching the egg. So after they dispatch all the creatures underwater and stuff like that and a few other attacks, they come back to find this thing is rampaging through the lab and has the assistant and her daughter trapped in a closet and is going to fucking get them. Until they scorch it with steam and cook it and probably serve it as escargot. So, of course, I'm making light of the whole thing, but it's head and shoulders above the vulture and actually isn't a bad fucking movie, considering practical effects and actual built-to-scale monsters. So, whether you want to check out the vulture is up to you. Monster that challenged the world is available, I think, on Blu-ray now and still on DVD, so definitely worth checking out. So that's our show for today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you in a couple days with some more black and white gems from the golden age of horror. So until then, stay safe. And we'll catch you on the flip side.